welcome to my breakdown of how to place a beaker what actions you can take and whether it's something that you would like to try yourself so i'm playing as the pink player today and just organize these money bags so as the pink player i have got four workers um this pink one starts on the board and on your first turn you can put it out anywhere you choose to go uh, as an action after that you can move anywhere for free for two spaces but if you land in a space with somebody else you have to pay a cost of one coin if you land somewhere with two other players obviously you're paying two extra coins so what can you do on your turn so with this particular worker he only stays on the outside rondel and the space he's in now is this storage box space so using this area here i've got a choice of upgrading my storage areas by taking this as soon as you take it you get the benefit um, at the top which would be um, two pariah points and two victory points or uh, put that into your storage and you'll get a glass so over on your board, I've already upgraded one of my storage boxes. You can see here it's got one, two, three spaces for storage. And I've covered up um, the victory point symbol, so it generated a one point. If I cover up this by placing a second box on top, that's another two victory points. And it's trying to balance where you put your resources and how fast you can spend them. You can never move a resource once it's been placed into an area. So aside from taking the box, you can also activate an area. So I can activate this instead of taking a box. So um, they've all got different uh, icons on them to activate, which gives you a really good uh, way of comboing new actions. So here that symbol matches over here. So I get to take a gypsum or um, a wood resource by activating. Um, but you do want the balance between generating more storage and what you can activate. Um, that is the storage box action. The next action is a market action. So this market action means receive two coins and then do any of the two following from this table. So you can upgrade gypsum to wood, wood to marble, marble to stone, or you can sell them or you can purchase um, a, a resource as well. We'll come on to the resources. So this market is good for generating money, getting rid of resources you're not using. Um, coming over to this action here, this is actually a build action. So it's one of the most popular actions. Always, There's always someone blocking that space, to be fair. And you've got two, two things you can do under the hammer action. The first action is a minor action, which is the small house symbol. And that relates to this section here. So over here, if you want to build something, you've got to start with the initial resource. So that's a gypsum to start, and that's a wood. So for me, I would potentially be taking off these two resources um, along with a gypsum. Then I could pay a gypsum, a glass and a marble. And that beautifies uh, the addition of the gypsum with the marble and the glass. So in this situation, I would be scoring eight points, taking this minor building and then adding it to my board. I could make it make it join this side so the wild means orange so i can generate four money or four prior points um but you're looking to obviously join the ends to generate benefits they also have these symbols at the top of the card and they come into different end game scoring but, but something to keep your eye on as well um, in terms of the major buildings the major buildings are over here these major buildings always move your money back along one so each time your money bag moves, potentially, you get one of the benefits at the top. But if you can get it all the way to the end, you get to choose any one of the earlier benefits. It's a really powerful spot. So it keeps within the theme of um, building the Alhambra of Sabika because um, it is the most powerful action, there's no doubt. They've all got cool benefits. So in uh, era one, you can move your money back here and then take a boat action, which you'll come to or take a consolidation action. We know about the storage over there on the top left. But once era one is finished, you have to move on to era two, which comes with slightly different bonuses and benefits, but it's definitely one of the most powerful actions in the game, which is building. Um, this symbol here, where the three is, 
that is a marble and a wood action so you can take three marble or three wood or any combination of and those are the three actions the three main actions on the outer rondelle that's available to you so there is a, an, a middle action there you can see with some silk and some clay so by paying the cost of one there or one there you could take those so if we take this one and put this into our storage that means that that's that's currently got something in there but because i'm already processing that if i were to take another one of those then that automatically processes and turns into a vase so that's the secondary action of taking those goods or same applies to a marble if you want to raise marble from somewhere else and um, this here that will is convert so you can see here in fact it should be there i don't have any uh, silk but if I, if I use this action as a secondary action, the silk that I've got turns straight into cloth, which goes into storage. So these items, you can see I've got three goods that are now processed from the raw side. What we're trying to do with those is we're trying to sail them to new lands and generate points. So if I then pay one coin here to come to here, because I'm the first person there, I'll take the um, the seal, which in this game seals are worth three points at the end of every game. And you pop them onto the side of your board there. But now I have um, in Argyle, I have presents in Argyle. You can deliver any goods. So any of those goods can be delivered to um, any city. But in demand in this city is a bag of sugar. So what we're trying to do is deliver sugar. You can deliver, deliver up to two unique goods. So one sugar, instead of getting one victory point and one prior point, a sugar at this city would be worth two prior points and two victory points. Now, once I'm at this base here, I don't have to sail again from the start. I can use this as a, as a starting point and pay two, four, and go straight to Cairo because I might want to deliver these goods here. They've all got different in-demand goods in the game. Um, and there is an option, which I'll come to next, of partnering. They call it consolidation. And consolidation means I'm moving a ship to this side of the game. If I get there first, anyone following behind me who wants to consolidate in the same region generates me prior points and victory points. So to consolidate a ship, you take the handshake action so you would bring your merchant to here so once he's in there you can then move any of your ships that may be here into the blue zone and that's going to generate me um, one of those resources at every round cleanup there's an immediate benefit there on the left so it's an interesting race of people trying to get to different locations it's the best way to get your prior points up Prior points are important because at the end of every round, you're going to be spending them um, to um, pay your dues. Uh, you don't have to spend points from here. You could do it as a combination of losing victory points or paying money, which is a nice touch, good flexibility by the designer. Um, but that's how shipping works. The more goods you can ship, the less points you'll lose. And, um, and there are lots of end game bonuses um, to be uh, reviewed, for example, and um, there may be one in here. So these are end game cards. If you want to write a poem, you have the option to buy these before any of your opponents. This one here says earn uh, points if you are the first, second, third player to have the number of presents in the most cities. And two uh, pariah points for each minor construction you have. But once I've bought this, it then goes into my uh, display. No one else can buy it. I'm the only person scoring points for that at the end of the game. There's space for two cards. Um, they are integral, and uh, it would be a valid strategy to get those early and have something to shoot for throughout the game because they do get snapped up towards the end of the game. But how do you um, how do you take that action? We'll come back and look at poetry in a moment. Here's the action to move a ship. And as I mentioned, you go uh, pay the cost to move a ship. Um, here you can activate any of your bonuses that are uh, on the side of uh, a city and um, 
once that's there you can come to the inner action you've got one person that moves around the rules are still the same you can move two spaces for free let's say i came in here that is the symbol for buying a poem so the, th the theme of the game is that they're writing a poem and they want to beautify it so you pay the uh, initial costs which are on the card but you can also then add any of these different unique resources to improve the costs the same as when you build uh, a building so you're getting the more the, the better uh, material you can spend the more points you will earn in the game um, we've seen the end game poems these are ongoing benefits and they're absolutely fantastic so this one here is earn two money for every two points um and it, and two points every time you get a seal so that combines nicely if you're going with a sailing strategy um this one here is pay one less coin per route traveled so that would make some of these routes for free potentially I've got a good one built in here so pay one money less each time you perform a secondary action so you can pick up these um resources that are on the wheel a little bit cheaper but also um, I have a red poem as opposed to a blue poem. A red poem is undertake a major construction. So um, to do that, um, obviously we know that we could build, but I can actually activate red poems by going to this activation spot. So they're a really good way of making combos. And if you don't like combos, this is not the right game for you because it can be um, very rewarding in terms of having a big turn and watching what other players are doing. And, and you do build up to some very nice turns indeed. Also, you can move your uh, middle person around the rondelle and that will generate three coins, plus an extra coin for every two poems you've got. Here we've got two, so we get four coins if that was the turn. So that's an overview of all the actions that you can do um, in Sabika. It's a thoroughly good strategy game. There's a lot to consider. Uh, it's recommended by me. And if you like mid to heavyweight Euro games, definitely one to check out.